To start right out and to quickly introduce myself, uh, my name is Vanessa Seiss and I'm the director of the Affordable Art Fair New York City edition. I've been directing this edition since 2017 and I have been with the company since 2012. And it's been an absolute joy to witness our galleries, our artists and our collectors develop alongside our editions. And I'm super excited to introduce you to our inaugural online fair today. So over the next 30 minutes, we'll be starting out by talking a bit about um, how to build your collection on a budget, since I find this goes hand in hand with the selection under 500 pounds. I will then take you through a selection of my personal highlights, and we'll finish the tour with a little five to 10 minute Q&A at the end of my presentation. Okay, so let's start out by talking about how to start your collection on a budget. Um, starting out at an art fair like Affordable Art Fair, online or in person, is really perfect because it gives you an overview of the contemporary art market today in an accessible price range. Here in New York, the cap is at our fairs $10,000. Um, for the online fair, the cap is £6,000, which is around $7,900. Next slide, please. So before you start diving into your first purchase, I really encourage you to think about three things, budget, space, and taste. If you seriously want to start building your own collection, um, it's really helpful to take a moment and reflect on what you like and what is important to you. What kind of medium you have to found yourself drawn to, styles that you've found yourself drawn to, subject matter that you like, colors that you like. Um, the next step is you look at the spaces that are currently available in your home um, and uh, also what the dimensions of those spaces look like. And then finally, you set your budget. Answering these questions for yourself will help you prepare incredibly well for your first art fair experience. May this be online or at an event. Next slide, please. So the beauty of browsing art online at affordableoutfair.com is that you can filter your search by budget. Um, and we even have selected curated um, collections of works under $500 and more. At the art fairs, um, I find that sometimes you fall in love with a piece that is well above your budget, and then you either financially stretch yourself or you're losing sight of other works that are out there. Online, this is an uncertainty that you can eliminate by using one of our um, filters, mainly the filter by price point. In addition to filtering by price, you can also filter by medium, color, style, and even dimensions, which makes it just so convenient to find that perfect piece for your home. And if you feel like you just want to roam and let your intuition guide you, we do also have a visual search tool uh, that I really encourage you to check out because I've definitely found artworks that I wasn't aware of before and that uh, I really, really liked and that really fit my taste. Whichever work you decide to buy, make sure you absolutely love it. That's something that even guides the most seasoned collector because after all, you want this to be a good investment. And a good investment for us means that you want to have it on your walls as long as possible, delivering joy, inspiration, and also spark wonderful and stimulating conversations between you and the people you share your space with. Next slide, please. So without further ado, let me take you through my top picks under 500 pounds from the online fair. We can see an overview of these works at the next slide. Okay, next slide, please. So this first piece we're going to look at together is Untitled 2 by British artist Nick Reindrod. Nick creates bold abstract works that skillfully layer strict geometric forms with gestural painterly handling. The removal of paint and erasure of marks play just as an important role as the application of paint, which becomes apparent upon closer look at this finished piece. What drew me to this piece is the ge simple geometric in this vibrant gold yellow that sits on this deep earthy background that has so much texture and depth to it. I really love it. With the medium being acrylic on board, 
it's a truly unique piece that can also be hung about or without a frame, which is something you always want to think about framing. Um, I can see this piece work very well on a salon style wall or really on its own. Next slide, please. This ceramic vessel abode for by South African artist Sharon Erickson immediately caught my eye for this tour. At 65 pounds or $90, this is a wonderful opportunity, I think, to enrich your home with a unique three-dimensional artwork that can look good on a bookcase, on a console, or really anywhere you have a nook that could really use a focal point. Sharon is traditionally trained with an MFA in ceramics, and she has exhibited her work mainly in South Africa. So it's very exciting that it's now accessible globally via the online fair. What drew me towards this particular piece, aside from the price, was the interesting surface perforation. And I know it's hard to see here on the slideshow, but on the website, I encourage you to check it out. Um, I also love these vertical cutouts and gold applications which stand in a bit of contrast to the overall organic shape and hence creating a bit of tension within the piece. Next slide, please. I chose this painting by Sam Reed for you because I like the beauty and the peacefulness of the motif and also the color palette. Uh, the British artist was trained in graphic design and has been creating works of mixed media for the last 28 years. In her work, um, she's drawn towards um, equanimity, change, assurance, timelessness, and mystery, which I think really comes through in this work. Uh, we can clearly uh, see this in the subject matter. Note that this piece is available framed and unframed when you look at my captions. So that's always something to look out for when browsing the online fair and the marketplace in general. Some galleries do offer framing options. Next slide, please. Okay, those of you who have visited a New York City edition of the Affordable Art Fair um, are probably very familiar with the New York City-based gallery Muriel Gopin. She is presenting Finnish artist Christopher Relander, who studied graphic design and visual arts and is self-taught in photography. His work is primarily influenced by artists such as Man Ray, using multiple exposures to blur the line between the natural world and the human form, which we can see so beautifully in this piece. Rilene has also exhibited internationally and he has won awards for its art and his works have been published in notable publications. I tell you this because um, an important aspect of uh, owning art I find is the storytelling about art. So knowing a bit more about the artists, where they've come from, where, where they've been, I find it super interesting and, and very important. Next slide, please. This dreamy etching by Sussex, uh, of the Sussex coast is Big Sun by Luella Martin. Her process here is solar plate etching, uh, where a metal plate is primed with a light sensitive polymer surface. An image on transparent film, like here, the Sussex coast is then laid on top of it and the whole thing is exposed to sun or UV light. The plate is then washed out in water before being inked up and printed in talio, like traditional edging onto damp paper. So solar plate is considered a more environmentally friendly process as it doesn't use the harmful chemicals required for the traditional etching project process. What I like uh, about Luella Martin is that she is a seasoned printmaker and solar plate etchings are her most recent body of work. We actually have a lovely video about her on our, the artwork page on, uh, of Big Sun. Um, so if you go on our website and search for the piece Big Sun, I really encourage you to check out the video. It's really lovely. Um, I also really love the motive of, of the coast with the rising moon. I feel like it's calming, but also evokes a longing feeling of spreading my wings and flying to faraway places. And at 190 pounds or $274 framed, it's a beautiful piece um, at an apartment friendly size. And I love that it's a small edition of 20. Next slide, please. So Patrick is an artist I've been working with for many, many years at the New York City edition and visitors of our fair here will probably mainly recall his color photographs, beach scenes of vintage cars printed on birch wood panel. They're absolutely beautiful. But I felt drawn to this 
architectural black and white photograph because I love the combination of rigid man-made geometric lines in contrast to the organic shapes of the cacti in the forefront of the photograph. The frame Patrick shows is also incredibly smart, I think. Um, it makes me so curious about the building behind the wall, who the architect is, what it would look like if it wasn't for the contrasting vegetation in the front. Um, I just love it when a piece uh, stimulates me in this way, and it certainly makes for engaging conversations in your home, I think. Next slide, please. Okay, here is our first bronze sculpture. Um, for those of you who are not so familiar with uh, affordableartfair.com and in our offering, we do have art in all kinds of uh, shapes and forms. And so this is the first sculpture that we're going to look at. Um, Nando Kalawide works in bronze and oak and is inspired by ancient Egyptian art, which he melts with modern form. The result are graceful and delicate figures that can either sit on a bookshelf with friends or as a centerpiece um, in a special place of your home. I really love that aspect of, of sculpture that you can curate a bit more freely since you don't need wall space. Uh, this piece, Oliver, is a unique piece and it's actually a very recent work of Nando Kaiwai from 2020. Next slide, please. Miranda Smith is a young up and coming artist who just graduated in 2019 from RMIT University in Melbourne with a Bachelor in Fine Art. Her work, Spring Tide, which we see here, is an abstract photograph of water intersecting with a light installation forming a dynamic wave. It stood out to me because of its color and dynamic. It, it actually took me a while to truly understand what I was looking at, which is something I always appreciate. The piece comes framed, which I absolutely love, and it's a unique print, which is super special for photography. This is not an addition. Next slide, please. Watercolor is probably one of my favorite mediums. I didn't know if you see, saw the watercolor behind me earlier, um, but I felt immediately drawn to this beautiful painting by Ferdinanda Florence, a second generation Armenian American artist based in California. Almost all her subjects are industrial or commercial areas who are home to no one, she says. Ferdinanda, however, feels drawn to them and finds something personal and familiar in them. And the way she depicts these spaces and structures convey a longing, which I think is achieved by her use of color and the use of negative space. When I uh, cover, uh, discovered this piece, I immediately thought of a faraway Mediterranean or Middle Eastern place, not knowing this is actually like, a, I think, a firefighter training site somewhere in California. So I absolutely love that about the piece and um, the price is, is super affordable. Next slide, please. TCAP is a collage by self-taught collage and mixed media artist Kareem Risk. Kareem does have a background in graphic design, which I think comes through in this highly textured and multi-layered works. I was drawn to TCAP by his use of collected imagery from post-war culture and advertising, such as the TCAP advert and also the vintage stationery, which I just have a thing for. Uh, in this process, Kareem selects images that resonate with him on a visual or emotional level. He then arranges, rearranges, crops, cuts, folds, tears, scratches, and peels back pieces to find interesting connections that reveal an ongoing visual dialogue between graphic design and fine art. While currently unframed, Smithson Gallery does offer framing options for this piece. So if you're interested, just get in touch with the gallery but we are the inquire about this piece button on the artwork page and if you have the slightest affinity for vintage pieces i encourage you to check out his other work i think it definitely went for one of the more subtle pieces so definitely feel free to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> next slide please this beautiful line of cut print by clemens buntik titled Naked Universe was inspired by a papyrus plant, according to the artist. Clement says about this piece, the oil-based inks that were used for the print on acid-free rack paper 
made me think of bare skin and the dark green of the plant on a night sky full of stars. Naked Universe plays with the idea that there is consciousness, a feel of bare, of naked knowing, where everything is clear. Buntik, to me, is a fascinating artist who was born in 1968 in San Francisco and moved in the 70s with his family to Bavaria to live an almost primitive life in close contact with nature. He then studied in Bavaria, Spain, and Switzerland and graduated with a diploma in printmaking from the Bauhaus-influenced Schule für Gestaltung in Basel, Switzerland. From 96 to 2000, Clemens was also here in New York, where he worked uh, for several artists at edition print, as an edition printer at Pace Prints. And um, he was also an assistant at the School for Visual Arts, um, which is very close to our office. Uh, he now runs his own print shop in uh, nearby Munich. And Clemens has exhibited internationally and also nationally. Next slide, please. Okay, and now meet this fine fella, a global bot by American artist Joel Kuntz. Joel has created an entire series of these global bots featuring multiple New York iterations, but also robots comprised of the famous landmarks of cities such as Chicago, Paris, and Singapore. I chose this specific piece because it prominently features one of my favorite buildings, the Chrysler Building. The series was conceived out of a request by his 14-year-old son, actually. And I love the playfulness of the works combined with an appreciation for architecture and nostalgia for a city. I could totally see the sprint decorate a child's room as well as an office or a living room. Next slide, please. Oh, this is one of my absolute highlights. Um, a sculpture made out of purse straps plaster, thermoform plastic, and spray paint by Kate Casanova. Kate is an interdisciplinary artist working at an, the intersection of sculpture, technology, and nature. And her poetic sculpt sculptures challenge conventional dualisms, such as human slash nature, mind slash body, and self slash other by using physical material, living organisms, and the human body as sites of exploration. Kate has exhibited nationally and internationally. She received an MFA from the University of Minnesota and is an assistant professor of sculpture at the University of Denver. What I love about uh, this particular piece is that you can place it more freely in your space, as I mentioned before. Um, and Kate's pieces, I really do encourage you to check out her other work on our website certainly challenge the viewer and spark interesting conversations. Um, you can really look at them forever and always notice something new about them. So definitely, if you like this piece, go and have a look and check out our other work. Next slide, please. This warm and abstract painting is by Salomon Kami, who grew up in South America and is currently living in Toronto. Salomon is a multidisciplinary artist with a background in architecture and design. And I just love the depth of perspective that his minimalist geometric abstractions create. His work challenges the viewer's perspective and almost has a hypnotic effect, which makes it such great work to live with. Kami is represented by Spence Gallery, a gallery that I've worked with for many, many years and that has a truly diverse and remarkable artist roster. So make sure to check out their profile on our website. Next slide, please. So Jess Quinn is an artist I discovered through the online fair. I didn't know her before because I have not yet worked with her gallery. And I immediately just fell in love with her pieces. The colors and patterns are just so cheerful. And I love the narrative of this somewhat real, somewhat magical desert place inhabited by this bold and adventurous woman seemingly napping in her granny chair. Uh, it just makes me wonder what the story could be if she's uh, in a dream. And I can totally see that a piece like this would be appreciated by all generations of a household. With a degree in fine art painting, just says about her work, I have no interest in a muted world, however sophisticated it thinks it is. I am happy to embrace the naive in my work. 
inspired by folk and outsider art, as well as the art of children to regain an insight that is often eroded as we enter the adult world. I love that. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're nearing the end of my artwork selections. I have three more works for you, this one included. And I'm excited to bring it back to our beloved city, New York. Highland One is from a series of small mixed media urban landscapes by New York native artist and designer Gail Garcia. Having gotten to know Gail a bit over the last few years, I'm always enamored by her stories and observations and how she's still so in love with and inspired by the city. And the way she pays homage to the present and the past through her work is, is just fantastic. And with the city struggling so much this year, uh, Gail's work is an important reminder for me of New York's vibrancy and resiliency. And I just love immersing myself in her work right now. And, and I think it's, it's a really beautiful moment in time to own one of her pieces. Next slide, please. Thank you. So in the preparation for this tour, I've been really impressed by the selection of works in the online fair under 500 pounds. And one gallery that has always catered to the emerging collector is Arteria Gallery from Canada, who is representing Marilyn Lemaitre. She's a French artist living in Canada and her work is characterized by layers of materials which she glues, scratches, removes, returns, delivers, controls and flattens. This is hard to gauge when, when seeing the work here on the presentation or shopping online, but I have seen them in the flesh at our fairs and they're quite remarkable uh, from a texture perspective, um, considering that there's such smaller works and there are such accessible works. I mean, the price is uh, 125 pounds, which is roughly about 163 US dollars. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Marilyn's works have also been used as cover illustrations for two books published in Canada and her paintings belong to the Cirque du Soleil collection as well as corporate and private collections internationally. Next slide please. Okay and lastly here's a little nod to the surfing culture with this dreamy two foot by two foot piece by Alberto Sanchez. It's an archival pigment print based on a photograph of Byron Bay, Australia, that is colored by hand and translated digitally to a photographic edition. Alberto is a Spanish Australian photographer and multimedia artist who hacks and reinvents his own photographs using a unique hand coloring technique, creating his form, own form of magic realism where photographic documentary is meshed with improbable landscapes. And Alberto travels the world and captures places he's drawn to. So if you like his style, I encourage you to take a look at his other works on the online art fair, um, because they're really beautiful. And you might find a, a work that, that is uh, using an image of a place that you really, really love. Next slide, please. Okay, and this is the end of my little artwork selection for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you found a piece that you like. Either way, I'm handing it over to you to see if there are any questions that I can help answer before we part ways. And I'll make sure to turn my camera back on now. You know what I mentioned before about starting your collection and collecting what you love, I think is a really important aspect. I get asked a lot about buying art as an investment, but I think what truly matters and what I've really um, read in interviews with other collectors in, in the past is always that you buy a piece that you absolutely love because you do want to live with it in your space forever. I think a piece of art that exists in your space for a long time, I consider that as a good investment. Ha, huh. okay, Claire's asking me what my favorite medium is. I think it's watercolor. <laughs> I just love, I just love watercolor. I just think it's one of the most beautiful mediums and 
Uh, as you can see behind me here, there's a piece by an artist, Vesna Chef, I've worked with on a New York City edition before. Thanks for the question, Claire. <laughs> And I know I talked quite a lot about um, the artist's background, um, you know, if what their education is, if they've been in other uh, corporate or private collections. And I do find that is important to know because as an up and coming uh, collector, it helps you gauge the sincerity of the artist and it helps you get an understanding for, um, you know, if the artist is going to create work for a longer period of time, this is, I think, especially valuable if you really fall in love with a particular artist's style and you can you want to grow your collection um, with works by that artist. Okay, we have a question here. Which artists that create pieces that explore the aspects of space or natural landscapes would you recommend? Ooh, that is a tough question from the top of my head. Um, aspects of space. I mean, I definitely think Salomon Kami um, is the artist that does that very well, especially in our price segment. Um, but I'm not sure if that might be a bit too abstract for you. Um, and landscape artists, I would have to get back to you, especially since we're here in the price range, I don't know, 500 pounds. Um, so if you want to email us your email address, um, we're happy to respond and like, find some pieces that you might like. Okay, if there are no other questions, um, I thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the works that I selected for you. And just know that uh, this artwork selection and the whole tour will be available on our website. So if you want to look back, you can do that. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy browsing the online fair a little bit and you got inspired to either start your collection or extend it with a couple of works that we are currently offering with our fabulous 50 international galleries. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I look forward to the next tour. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye.